Um, I just think days, mornings and nights are really hard for us. Um, just he's so loud in the morning, so missing that, waking up the whole house in the morning. Um, nighttime, obviously, when you're used to being in the house with someone for 17 years, him not being here, so morning and nights are really difficult for us. A lot of people have reached out to you. You were showing me some of the things that have been sent to you. Um, it shows how much, you know, you knew how much you loved him and your family loved him, but all of a sudden you find out that the whole community and even outside of Clark County, people knew him and loved him. How has that been to at least have that? Um, some of the stories that I've heard have just been amazing. I mean, everyone that I meet has a story and um, something that he's impacted their life, you know, on a positive, on a positive note, but um, just, it's, it's amazing. From Speedway to Wendy's to any restaurant you go to, he's been there and they know him. <laughs> I mean, and you, you knew he, his job took him to all those places, but you don't really, you know, day to day, think about how he's interacting with people and, and kind of the impact he's having on them. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about his smile and his handshake. Um, he always greeted you with a handshake and always left you with a smile. And so those are the most things that I hear um, when I hear stories about him. Um, is that both um, nice but difficult at the same time when you hear those? It is. Um, it's obviously touching because obviously I knew he was a great man, um, yeah. even at home, but just to know that he was so passionate in the community and his job, I mean, Matt loved his job. We always joked that if we hit the lottery, we were leaving, and he goes, I'm not leaving, I'm not quitting my job. You know, so mm -hmm. he loved his job and he enjoyed every day getting up and going. Um, there have been some initiatives now that are being undertaken because he was known for serving the community, not just his job, but I mean, outside of that, looking for ways to help the community. And now, um, like this recent project where they're going to try and pack uh, meals for Ukrainian refugees, those type of things, but being done sort of in his honor, what does that make you think or how does it make you feel? It's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, the community and the things that they have done to honor Matt has just been unbelievable. Sometimes I'm just not even sure that it's, is this real? Um, but it's, it's amazing. The community, the Sheriff's Department, other agencies have just been phenomenal in honoring him. But like you said, you know, I mean, th th these things are all very nice and you're grateful for them. But at the end of the day, you have a big hole in your family and a hole in your heart. Um, and that will take a long time. Take me back to finding this out because, you know, he serves uh, all these years as a deputy and you always know that there's a chance, but, you know, you, after I haven't done it that long, maybe, you know, you're, maybe it's not at the top of your mind every day. Yeah. But, um, so Matt was also part of the special operations team and, um, I want to say maybe close to a year, seven months, they've been doing that. And I think when they did things, it worried me more than the normal every day on the road. Um, because I think we were just for 15 years, we were used to that. And we always had an agreement. If something big was going on, there was an officer shooting, there was anything that was big, he would always answer the phone and say, I'm good and hang up because I knew he couldn't talk. I knew he couldn't stay on the phone. And so, um, I actually got on Facebook that day and I saw there was a shooting and and I, I saw that it was in Harmony and uh, being a Leo's wife you kind of get to know the areas when he says I'm in area three today and so I knew that was in area three and so I immediately started calling his phone um, and he didn't answer so I called and called he didn't answer so I texted him and I, I just had this feeling because like, he knows and, and, and in the last 15 years he's always picked up I'm good and hang up so I immediately called Jean. I said, I think something's wrong. And so from there is when we found out that it was Matt. But, that, but, but because he broke that routine, you knew. I knew, yep. I mean, there was never one time that he never picked up the phone to say I'm good. That was our thing we agreed on from day one when he joined the department. You have to say I'm good. Yeah, you give me that two seconds. Yep. And, I'm and he always did, always. And when I knew that day when I called three or four times in a row, I'm texting his phone, I'm calling his phone, no answer. So I knew right away that it had to be, he had to be involved or it had to be him. Did you go out there? Did you go meet with 
I did other not. Family. I did not. I called Jean, and um, Jean actually went to the scene, and um, some people from SPD um, had came here to stay with me, and you know, kind of keep things here. Um, I did not go, uh, but they were great. They kept me updated throughout the whole entire thing. Um, I tell you, it was the longest three hours of my entire life. Um, just the waiting, and so, yeah. A lot of people, I don't know if you had a chance then to go to the hospital. Or so I did. Um, so um, someone from the Springfield Police Department had taken me to Miami Valley, and we actually arrived as Care Flight was landing on top of the hospital. Um, and so um, Dayton Police Department, phenomenal. They were so wonderful when we got there, made sure we got to where we needed to be, um, took us in a room. The doctor came in immediately, obviously, and told us that um, Matt didn't make it. Um, and then we did get to see him, so it was it was tough. Is it is is it something where it seems like a blur, or is it something where you feel like you remember every single thing? No, I don't remember every single thing. Um, we were actually just talking about this the other day. There were so many people there, um, just you know, to be there, and I just remember sitting in that room, and I remember the doctor coming in, and from there it's kind of a blur to me, but I do remember walking in the hospital room to see him. Um, but from there, I, it's it's a blur. Any way to prepare yourself for that, even though, I mean, you, obviously you're sitting here, you didn't pick up, you knew something was wrong, but any way to prepare for walking in there to that hospital room? No, and you know, I, I didn't really know a whole lot about, you know, where he was shot, you know anything like that um, so I didn't know what to expect when I walked in there and um, my older son and I walked in together and it was it was very difficult um, obviously because he was shot in the face um, and just to to see my husband laying there you know like that was just traumatizing and you're trying to think so many thoughts going through your head at that point I'm sure yeah do you remember any of them not really. I, I just remember um, our daughter, who's 13, um, was here at home, and I just remember, how am I going to tell her? Like, how am I going to let her know that he's not here? So. And that's just something that you, you do, but you do it day by day almost, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, she has lots of questions, and, you know, when she's ready and she, there's days she's like, I don't want to talk about it. Or, you know, she'll say, well, you know, what happened with this? And so I do tell her what I know, um, but there's a lot she doesn't know, and I think eventually she'll want to know. Um, but she has always told her dad she wanted to be in law enforcement. And, you know, I asked her the other day, is that still what you want to do? And she does. And so um, it's just she, that was, they were very, very close, very close. Um, a lot of people probably would wonder what is in your heart for the other people that were involved in this incident. Um, so uh, with Matt being on the force for 15 years, you know, you kind of, he joins a family, but as a spouse, you also are in the family. Um, so I know all of them, most of them very, very well. Um, and I know that they worked very hard to try to save Matt. And for me, it was very important that I got to tell them thank you. And so um, that was just important to me. You didn't want them to carry the thought that you were disappointed in them? I did not. And um, I can only imagine how they were feeling or like, oh, man, what's Tracy going to think when she knows? But I wanted to reassure them that I know as his brothers and sisters that they were phenomenal and did everything they could to try to save him. They're also hurting as well as we are. Um, you don't just build a coworker relationship, it's a family. And so I just wanted them to have that reassurance that, you know, I felt that way. So. What about the people he was dealing with that day? Uh, obviously they perished, but... I don't know anything about him, I'll be honest with you. I haven't turned the news on since it happened. I don't know his name, I don't know what he looks like. I don't care to know that right now. Um, because I want to remember the good memories of Matt. And I feel like that would make me angry. And so I don't need that at this time. And so I honestly don't know anything about him. So at this point, you're like, I, I, I only have so much emotions that I yeah. want to keep them over here yeah. on the positive side as, as well as I can. Right. 
And so people have asked me, like, did you know him? Or, you know, I'm like, I don't know his name, never seen him. I haven't looked up any news articles, nothing. For me, that's just how I need to cope right now. Right. So, so I want to handle it. Mm -hmm. What do you tell people? Um, you know, like you said, how much he loved it. He told you that if you won the lottery, he still wasn't yeah. changing jobs. So clearly, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, well, if you knew this was going to happen when he started on the, the department, would you have tried to talk him out of it? Um, so Matt and I actually graduated the police academy together. Okay. Um, and I just knew right away it wasn't for me. Um, but Matt was so excited. Like he couldn't wait um, to get on the department. And we always talked about you know, when we see officer involved shootings, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this, you know, and so we would discuss things and I guess you never just think it would hit home. And so I don't think he would change anything. I mean, I think he would still be him. I mean, he loved his job and he loved people. And that's what people, everyone says, he was, the reason he did it, because he loved helping He people. loved it. I mean, it, it speaks volume when you ride by the Clark County Jail and the inmates have rest in peace, Deputy Yates, in the window. I mean, to me, that speaks volume. Um, he was, he gave respect, you know, to them as, as he would anyone else. And I think that's what carried his legacy so far is how he treated people. You, uh, you know, you, you have to live everyday life. Continue, you go to run errands, you go to the store, whatever. You come home into your neighborhood, there's a lot of um, police flags out there trying to support you. It's mm -hmm. nice to add helpful? Um, it is. My neighborhood has been fantastic as well. Um, they lined, as you see, all of our streets with flags. Um, they come over daily and check on me. Um, they've just been, they've been wonderful. Um, you know, unfortunately, now you're in this group, <laughs> you know, that, it, that you never wanted to be in. Um, so how do you talk to other uh, LEO spouses and uh, about the possibility of something like this? Um, so I'm, I'm really close with quite a few of them. Um, obviously being 15 years, you know, hanging out outside of work, things like that. Um, I mean, they see my hurt. They worry now for their spouses, um, obviously as they should. Um, but I mean, they knew what Matt and I had. And so we just always talk about the good memories and things that we, things we shared and things we had together, so. What, uh, you know, you've heard so many words over the last three weeks about Matt, uh, but are there, is there anything, you know, that you would want to share with the public that maybe they don't know, or are there some things you'd rather just keep to yourself, you know, like, this is Matt and me, and I'm going to hold on to that. Um, I mean, I, I actually shared a few things on social media. Matt loved to dance and sing. And people didn't know that about him. Um, and so I always had my camera out, or my future daughter-in-law always had her camera rolling. And so I shared some of those with um, the community on Facebook just so they could see the other side of Matt, too, which was still fun and, and um, happy. But there's some things that I just keep between me. Mm -hmm. Hold on to you. Yep. those memories. Um, How do you go on? day to day. You know, I don't know. Um, I was telling Jean, like, how do you move on? I don't know what that looks like. And I mean, right now you don't, it's not like you want to in one sense. I mean, you have to live life, but you don't really want to move on because that will be more of a loss. Yeah. Right? And I've delayed in doing some things just, I think maybe, so it doesn't seem real. Um, but it's it's real and it's it's starting to feel it so and you said that you know it's it's those off times where it hits maybe when you're not expecting it but you're like this should be happening now and it's not yeah to walk through the door at the end of a shift or whatever it would be we always i always joked with him about the sound of velcro and i'm like that sound of velcro is so refreshing you know and, and it's you know because to hear that vest come off and just not hearing that anymore.